If you're not a member of a club or some similar self-help organisation and you fish as a lone boat, then having an auxiliary outboard is an absolute must. I think it's fair to say that these days all the main manufacturers of outboard motors can justifiably hold their heads up in terms of product reliability. It's as they age or are subjected to long-term neglect that reliability problems start to creep in. To an extent, you can minimise this risk by flushing residual salt water from the cooling system and by regular servicing. Protecting the electrics and mechanical parts from dampness under the cowl will also help improve longevity and reliability. But unfortunately, you can never insure yourself completely against engine failure problems at sea. What you can do is ensure that should one come along, you're not left stranded at the mercy of the elements until the rescue services arrive. The most obvious question to ask in relation to auxiliary power is how big, or probably more to the point, how small an engine can I get away with for the weight of boat it will need to push along. Obviously, different weights and shapes of boats will make different demands. Wind and tide can also play their part too. Having said all that, and having tested quite a few small engines over the years, for boats capable of being trailed and beach launched, providing you have sufficient fuel on board, four horsepower should be enough to get you back to shore. To demonstrate this, here we're putting the Suzuki DF4 through its paces on the back of our Warrior 170, which has a quoted trailing weight of 1300 kilos. As with life jackets and flares, an auxiliary outboard is one of those pieces of kit you invest in in the hope that it will never have to be used. What you also need to invest in is keeping it secure on the auxiliary pad until such time as it might be called into action. To prevent it from working itself free and disappearing while bouncing around either on the road or on the water, use a ratchet strap to hold the bracket tight against the transom and to act as a safety lanyard. Obviously, when the engine is to be used, this will need to be loosened to drop the bracket down, then re-tightened for security. One problem with auxiliary outboards, caused mainly by the design of the boat and the positioning of the auxiliary pad, is the distance the engine ends up away from the fishing well when in use. In this contrived example, Charlie Pitchers has climbed over the back to operate the thing. But in reality, once it's been fired up, if the steering lock is used to fix the engine facing in a forward orientation and the throttle is also locked on full power, then it should be possible to manoeuvre the boat with the steering wheel using the failed main outboard as a rudder. On the day of these tests, we didn't actually need anything more than an auxiliary and a cup full of petrol to get us out far enough to fish. With fast boats and powerful engines, it can be difficult to bring yourself to motor just a few hundred yards off and put the anchor down. There's a feeling in most of us that the longer the sailing time and the greater the water depth, then the better the fishing should be. But that isn't always the case, as demonstrated here on the day of the Suzuki Auxiliary Trial, when we plodded out no more than 600 yards and caught ourselves, amongst other things, 18 early season plays. As anticipated, the Suzuki DF4 was well up to the job, clocking up a creditable and for its size impressive 4 miles per hour on the GPS speed overground facility. A simple little engine to operate, which, if it's maintained and run regularly, should be an insurance as well as an asset for many years to come.